Hey guys, what's up? Alec back with the daily stock market and look at that, a fairly green day in the markets on Friday. We even have Tesla up 3% at $213 per share. Currently sitting at a $678 billion market cap. Now there was a poll that happened over the weekend and investors think that Tesla is the next stock to go above a $1 trillion market cap. Now that is an interesting talking point that we're going to talk about in the next video. So make sure you subscribe with post notifications on so you don't miss out on that. But in this video, what we're going to be talking about is the best stocks under $10 per share. I know everyone loves stocks under $10 per share. So if you are a lover of the stocks under $10 per share, this video is for you. And without any further ado, like this video, subscribe on YouTube for the full length videos, and let's dive right into it. So the first one up is SoFi Technologies at $7 per share. They're up 20% in just a week. Now, if you've been following the YouTube channel for a while, I was talking about this one closer to $4.50 and under $5 per share. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is setting a price alert. Um, if if um, SoFi moves below $5.15 per share, it's going to be on my radar and a swing trade is going to be a lot more profitable at that level. Right now, it's at $7 per share. I think it can go down below $5 per share once again. And every time it goes below seven, below $5 per share, it always pops back up, which makes for a good swing trade um, time and time again. And we don't have time to track and remember manually if SoFi is falling under $5 per share. That's why you have to be using price alerts, price alerts, price alerts, price alerts. I'll say it three times because it's that important. Set your price alerts, obey your price alerts, and revisit the stock once the price alerts go off. It's one of the most important things as a stock market trader. Um, remember, SoFi did IPO at $11 per share. And if you don't know, SoFi is like a bank. They do a lot of financial different service things, student loan, refinancing options, private loans. They're basically like a bank. They're a negative earning company right now with a negative PE ratio, a market cap of $6 billion. So there is a lot of room for growth, by the way. If you are a long-term holder, SoFi could be good for a long-term portfolio also. Just remember, here's a huge disclaimer. Any stock under $10 per share is automatically way more inherently risky than some of the other stocks in the stock market. So everything on this list is going to be risky. Um, obviously, risk has comes with reward. And if SoFi goes back to around 20 $25 per share, that could be an excellent return, especially if you get in under $5 per share. Now that could take two, three, four, five years for SoFi to get back to those levels with lots of growth happening that needs to happen within those years. But for SoFi you know, to jump back up to $10 per share, that's a little bit more realistic for swing traders and short-term traders. Something to consider that's going on right now is with SoFi is the debt deal would end freeze on student loan payments, which caused the stock price to jump for SoFi because people have to start their repayment processing again for student loans and have to pay their student loans again and ends the pause or ends the freeze, which is good because a lot of students could use something like SoFi to repay their loans. OK, the debt ceiling agreement on track for House vote Wednesday would reinstate government student loan payment repayments after more than three years. That should benefit the online professional finance company SoFi, which refinances student loans. President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCart McCarthy reached a deal on Saturday, a little more than a week before June 5th the so-called X date when the government couldn't pay its bills. So that's a big reason why we see SoFi Technologies up 20% in the past week and the rally could continue. If we go back to a month, it's up 45%, by the way. 
and the rally could continue above $10 per share. If we can see SoFi break some of these 52 week resistance, that could be a very bullish thing and it, uh, it could insinuate a new breakout or indicate a new breakout. So if we do see SoFi at a 52 week high, that could be positive momentum for the stock for a rally back above $10 per share. And the next stock that we're going to be talking about under $10 per share is Snapchat or ticker symbol SNAP. Now this is $10.34, but last week it was under $10 per share. So we're going to be adding them in the video. They're also up 24% in the past month. Now the place we're going to put price alerts on Snapchat, by the way, is under $10 per share also. So again, that's why they did make the video. We see the resistance closer to $10 per share. Um, and I really want to be buying under $8 per share for swing trade and also for a long-term hold, a riskier long-term hold. Remember, this is a very risky um, hold, but it has a lot of reward potential. We saw Snapchat closer to $83 per share in the past. I'm not saying that they will go that high again, but if they are going to all-time highs, if they do... Um, that would be around an 800% gain on Snapchat's stock price, which would be absolutely bonkers. Even if we could see them closer to 30 or $25 per share again, that would still be a 250 to 300% gain on Snapchat. So if Snapchat ends up getting their act together over the next three years or even two years, that could be a very good thing for long-term holders that stuff Snapchat in their high-risk long-term portfolio, okay? In my opinion, Snapchat could trade above $15 per share in the next 12 to 24 months. However, I want to buy under $8 per share, remember. If we scroll down, we can see that Snapchat is a negative earning company, and that's why they've had the sell-off so hard. We'll jump into their income statement in a second and briefly go over that. It kind of shed some light to why they've had such a huge sell-off down 87% still from highs with a $16 billion market cap. So there is a lot of room and a big runway for growth in the market cap sector of Snapchat if things end up going right for Snapchat. Some bullish things to consider. Aggressive investments and in innovation, which also brought about Snapchat's spectacles, may expand the firm's ecosystem, diversify its revenue source, and make the company profitable earlier than expected. And that's the most important thing is getting to that profitability as soon as possible for Snapchat. Snap holds on to younger users, may provide significant value to advertisers seeking to target a younger demographic. Snapchat may take social media market share from Twitter and Facebook and even TikTok also, keep in mind. Now they're paying creators to post directly on their platform. Okay, so here we have an annual income statement pulled up for Snapchat. In 2018, it was negative 1.26 billion. Wow, so that's a big, big loss. But as you can see, it, it kept getting better and better. 2019, it got a little bit better. 2020, it got a little bit better. 2021 was the best one yet at only negative 487 million, which was a 48% increase from the year before that. But in 2020 is where things went astray and why the stock, it, you know, it's crashing so hard and why it, it makes sense that it's crashing so hard. The net income came in at negative $1.4 billion. They're, right now, it seems like they're paying creators to pay, uh, post specifically on their platform, which is a good thing for daily active users and keeping users on their social media platform, Snapchat, and not going elsewhere because their favorite creator is posting there every single day. But it, unfortunately, that's where they're going wrong is they're, they're paying money they don't have to these creators, so they post every single day. And it's really affecting the bottom line and their net income, which is a tragedy and a horrible thing to see. If we go over to the quarterly graph, it's really not getting any better also. The last five quarters are pulled up 
and it really hasn't done anything, okay? So negative 300 million, negative 400 million, negative 300 million, negative 288 million was a little bit better, but the most recent one came in at negative 328 million. Okay, so we need to see improvements. We need to see that cut in half, you know, closer to negative 150 million losses, um, negative 75 million, and eventually getting the profitability. And if Snapchat could become profitable and consistently be profitable, there's a good bounce back story and there's a strong chance that Snapchat stock could trade closer to $25 to $30 per share once again if they're able to figure that out. Their balance sheet is not too concerning, which is a good thing to see that they still have assets and cash um, and they're not totally underwater with their liabilities just yet. So overall, closer to $8 per share. I think Snapchat is an interesting one to be adding to your portfolio uh, for short term, medium term, swing trades above $10 per share, but also long term holds for a risky portfolio closer to $15, $20, $25, even $30 per share in the next 24 months or more. And the last stock that we'll be talking about is CCL Carnival at $12 per share. Wow, this stock has really um, gone up in the past month. Last time I was tracking this one, under $10 per share. And that's why it's in this video is because it's under $10 per share is the price to be buying it. And even closer to $8 and $9 per share is the best for swing trades. Okay, in the last one year, we can see that a 52 week high is closer to $13 per share. We can also see that some supports are closer to uh, some resistances, excuse me, are closer to $12 per share, which the stock's trading at right now. So it could be an inflection point. The stock could have a breakout and trade closer to $13 per share, or it could um, hit bounce off that resistance and go lower, 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 closer to that $9 per share mark, which is personally where I want to be buying. You can see my price alerts at $9.50, and I want to be buying under $9. So if I can even get $8, $7 per share, even $6 per share, being patient on Carnival stock, Snapchat, are going to be some of the best things you can do. There's no FOMO in these stocks, so don't feel like you're missing out. You know, wait and be patient for good deals to present themselves so that way you can enter with a larger position and be a more confident in it and swing trade and get a nice 20%, 30% gain. Okay, if Carnival does go under um, $8, $7 per share, there's a good chance you can swing trade it and make some money. Okay, because Carnival stock often bounces back um, when it goes that low. Now, for long-term holders, I think there is possibility for Carnival to go under to go over twenty to twenty-five dollars per share once again. It could take some time, just like the other stocks that we're talking about. But if we look at the last five years, we saw Carnival close trading closer to sixty-three dollars per share. So if they end up doing things right and get their act together when it comes to their net income, we can see that their EPS is right on the verge of profitability right now. We'll actually take a peek at their income statement in a second, so we don't have to look too much at their EPS, but we can see that it was pretty negative um, in 2022, but in the recent quarters, it's really starting to bounce back. So if they can get that under control, um, it would be very interesting to see where Carnival stock could be in the next two to three years. Okay, um, by the way, they also have a market cap of 15 billion. And if we look at the five year chart on their net income, they actually in 2018, when their stock was closer to $60 per share, it was their net income was closer to 3.1 billion. So very profitable, looking good. 2019, 2.9 billion, same story. But then the pandemic came, right? And the 2020, they had negative 10 billion on their net income, which was absolutely tragedy to see. We can also see that that really messed up their balance sheet. Before, they had 43% debt to asset ratio, which is really good. And in 2020, it's closer to 86% debt to asset ratio. So not only do we have to see them become profitable, but we also have to see them paying off their debts, their long-term debts, their short-term debts, and accruing more cash and getting that debt to asset ratio closer to 40 or 50% once again um, for their stock price to even go close to $30 per share again. 
Now, if we go on the quarterly graph, we can see that things are getting better. Um, just five quarters ago, um, we saw that was 1.8 billion negative loss on their net income for just a quarter. This is a quarterly graph, by the way. And the next quarter was the same story. And then they had a 72% increase to only negative 700 million. So if we can see that profitability, again, getting closer, the total revenue doesn't really matter right now. We really want to focus on net income. We want to see profitability. We want to see strong quarters um, increasing towards profitability. And if we can see a quarter with a 1 billion net income, 2 billion net income, back up to 3 billion net income on the full year. That would really be a spectacular thing for Carnival stock and we really need to see that if we want to see them trading closer to 20, 25, $30 per share once again. And we also need that balance sheet to become a lot better, closer to the 40 to 50% debt to asset ratio. So those are things that you want to be tracking if you are a CCL investor holder or swing trader. So I hope you guys enjoyed that short and concise video. I know you guys love the short videos and the stocks under $10 per share. So leave a big thumbs up on this video if you appreciate it. Also subscribe on YouTube for part two. I'm gonna be making the best stocks under $10 per share part two. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that one. If you wanna join my private group where I post all my trade. If you wanna join my private group where we have amazing days every single day in our group, click on success number eight on the highlight section of my Instagram. Read some of these positive testimonials. $2,000 being made, $3,500, $1,600, four, $400 being made, um, $1,000, the list goes on and on with all these success stories. I'm at a 10% return this month since joining the Discord. And you can see I said, nice, what is that, $3,000? And he said $4,000 and then shared a, a screenshot of the one month chart of his portfolio up 9%, $4,000 in just the last month from joining. So if you're looking for a success story or to become more confident in the stock market, if you're looking for... Um, top traders to bounce your ideas off of live trading group every single day from market open to market close dm me that's all you got to do the daily stock market 200,000 followers now 761 posts dm me on instagram i'll shoot you over my website so you can check out everything for yourself and if you like it and it makes sense to you then let's go ahead and get you started with the stock market and make some money in the stock market together. I And don't worry about if you're just a beginner, you don't know anything about the stock market. My job is to take beginners that know absolutely nothing and teach them how to become an advanced trader in just a few months. So thank you guys for all the love and support. Message me on Instagram if you want to join the private group. Share this video with a friend if you think that they will find some value in it. Like this video and I'll keep making these videos for you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Remember, don't time the market, buy the market. Peace.